I'm Dr. Deborah Watson, Innovation Manager at Business West, and I'd like to welcome you to our second workshop, part of the Summer of Innovation from Somerset Innovation Exchange. Uh, I think we've got a few people still joining us as we go, um, so hopefully they will they will all come in and, and catch us as we as we're on as we start. Um, this event is funded by Somerset Council, which has brought together a collective of businesses, government agencies, and other organisations working under the banner of Somerset Innovation Exchange showcasing and supporting innovation through live events, workshops and webinars. Today's session is co-produced by Business West, a B Corp, offering businesses support to start up and grow their businesses. This morning, we are talking about developing a digital marketing strategy that delivers return on investment. This online event will provide practical guidance on how to develop and implement a cohesive digital marketing strategy and will outline some of the support tools available. There'll be a mix of information, practical sessions and case studies to get you inspired. Uh, but first, a little bit of uh, housekeeping for you all. Um, it's, it's supposed to be quite a large meeting today. Um, so if uh, you can keep yourselves on mute, um, that would help with the sound for everybody. Um, but with video on, as we'd love to see you um, and uh, to get you all involved later on in the session. Um, any questions you do have, please add into the chat. Um, and later on, uh, we will... Um, be bringing you into the conversation. So uh, if we will also be recording the session so you can watch back key parts. But because we're recording, if you don't want to be in that recording, please uh, turn your video off for those, those parts. Um, if I now take us through the agenda, um, we've scheduled in time to cover practical aspects of the questions we're raising. We're aiming to finish by about 12 or sooner if we get everything done. So we're going to start off with um, um, a, a, a a quiz, some presentations, um, a case study, an exercise for you all to take part in, a look through some analytics, and then more chance for Q&A and the support available. So to kick off, let's have a, a quick poll. So a quick question. How do you manage your digital marketing? Hopefully a poll will appear. Here we go. How do you manage your digital marketing? Are you just starting out? Um, is it internal and a bit ad hoc? Is it internal, but part of a strategy? Or have you outsourced your digital marketing? So that's question one. Um, if you tick along and see where we get to. Um, why is marketing important to you? If you could just give us a couple of words, a couple of sentences, depends on uh, how much you wish to tell us. Um, that would be good for two. And then question three. Uh, what area would you specifically like more knowledge of? Um, SEO, search engine optimization, Google Ads, or pay for click, a pay per click even. So, if you could all have a, a quick whiz through those those polls. We also asked one of the questions in advance of you all, so it'll be interesting to see whether the, the, the answers align with what you previously said. Okay. I'll tell you that after, so I don't influence the, uh, the result. So have, has, I can only see some of you on screen. Have people finished filling in the quiz? How are we doing? I've got a couple of thumbs up. Another 15 more seconds, Deborah, and then we'll close it. 15 seconds. Oh, it's now a rush if you haven't finished it yet. <clears throat> if you've just joined us, we're just in the middle of a poll. So just go for as many of the answers as you can. There's three questions on the screen. Right, I should have counted 15 when I was told it was 15, shouldn't I? So we probably walked down at five, something like that. Here we go. So we have the answers. I can see the answers. So I'm hoping you all of you can. So in terms of question one, how you manage your digital marketing? Um, the majority are in uh, internal ad hoc, but we've got uh, nearly 30% just starting out. And we've got a, a couple of people on the call who uh, have a strategy or are, are outsourcing. So um, the biggest one here is internal ad hoc. So let's let's see if we can make that ad hoc more part of a strategy. Um, and for those that have a strategy, let's get your strategy improved. Um, 
I will. I don't. I don't. Oh, I don't get to see the custom answers for the for the for the next one, so I'll have to skip over that. And in terms of the next, oh, question three is the one I was hoping would come out like that. So we asked you all in advance what people were most interested in learning from today, and the top answer that came out was SEO, um, followed by Google Ads. So you are on message with yourselves, um, and you've come out with SEO as the number one priority, which is good because that's what we're focusing today's works workshop on. Having asked that earlier, um, it was just if people had changed their minds, we would have tweaked the timings a little. But that is all good as far as I'm concerned. So SEO, it will be right. So um, thank you for that. That was just to get everybody involved and just to make sure we were focusing our time in the right place. So it, now, um, now I hand over um, to our digital marketing speci specialist, Angus Ogilvie Stewart. Um, so he's going to guide us through. So please welcome Angus. Thanks for that. So let's discuss how to develop a digital marketing strategy that delivers return on investment. So let's have a look at what we're going to cover in this first part of the uh, session today. Firstly, I just want to give you a quick resume as to who I am, uh, and then I wanted to talk a little bit more about um, some of the projects that I've worked on uh, for the Innovate UK program. And then what I wanted to start to do is to think about how we can move from inside out to outside in thinking. I'll explain a bit more when we get to that slide. Uh, then we can look at how we might be able to reach our customers digitally. And then using some research that should be free to everyone, uh, we can work out how to create better landing pages for your website. So that's kind of the first half. It looks a bit more of as to how we can improve your actual website and your landing pages to be able to engage with your audience better. And the second part is to how do we generate more traffic to those uh, websites? So I'm going to look specifically at search engine optimization, pay-per-click advertising, social media marketing, and uh, we can have a brief nod to affiliate marketing. So a little bit more about me. I started my career in media buying. I worked for two large advertising agencies in London um, where my role was to place advertising in front of the right people at the right time with sufficient frequency to uh, deliver the advertising message. Uh, you can see that they were big blue chip clients spending lots and lots of money on advertising. Uh, so it was very much um, about researching your target audience and placing your ads in front of the right people people. In 1998, I was made head of what was then described as new media, which was basically internet marketing. Uh, this was eight years before Facebook launched. It was around about the time that Google launched. Uh, Yahoo was the search engine of choice back in those days. Um, so it was very much early days of uh, internet marketing. Uh, websites were notoriously expensive to build, uh, they were clunky, uh, there wasn't really any uh, mobile phone usage of internet, so it was, uh, it was a totally different world to, to the, what it is now. Um, in 2000, after doing that for a couple of years, I then travelled around the world for a year, um, having got married, and then uh, came back to the UK where I set up as a business consultant, and I was helping uh, some businesses in the construction world um, where I help them develop their websites and market themselves on a, on a, on a um, smaller basis to clients in the London area. And then a year later, I set up my own business in the construction world, um, which I did very much from a marketing perspective. And I built that up over about 11 years or so. And it culminated uh, with me being able to uh, buy some land and build some houses, uh, which I uh, subsequently sold. And I moved uh, from the southeast down to Devon in 2013, about 10 years or so ago now. And uh, initially, I um, decided that when I moved down here, I'd set up as a business consultant to offer my services to other small businesses um, who wanted to market themselves better, specifically using um, online um, tools that were available to them. 
Uh, in 2014, I became a growth accelerator coach uh, working with Business West, um, helping to deliver um, a government program to help small businesses uh, improve the way that they market themselves. Um, after about a year, the government pulled the plug on that particular program and I decided I'd set up my own digital marketing agency where I build websites and carry out pay-per-click advertising campaigns and social media marketing for clients who are willing to pay for that service. And then um, in 2021, around about COVID time, um, Business West invited me to uh, help deliver the Innovate UK Edge program, again, where I was helping um, build uh, businesses and, and their interface with, uh, with their clients online. So uh, developing inside out to outside in thinking, uh, in terms of the Innovate UK program, I work with a lot of clients who um, are passionate about their area of business. You know, they, they uh, have developed it from scratch or they've developed a new model on, on an existing thing. And, um, you know, often they'll say, right, oh, this has got to go on their website. That's got to go on the website. That was really hard to do. So let's put it on the website because that shows, um, you know, exactly where we've come from. Now, where I often try and help um, businesses on the Innovate program uh, is to start thinking about it very much from their customer's point of view. So this means that, you know, your customer will have an issue that they need to address. Um, then they're looking for a solution to that. They go online, they try and find out the solution. And if we can put your goods or services in front of the customer in a way that helps solve their problem, then you're more likely to get out of the, the whole process what you want as a business. So that's the core thinking of uh, moving from inside out to outside in thinking. So there's plenty of ways that you can reach your customers digitally. Uh, it really depends on the uh, market that you're in, but obviously uh, you can reach people through Google or Microsoft search engines. Uh, there's Facebook, Twitter, Maybe you have a blog post that you put out, Pinterest, eBay, LinkedIn, your Google My Business listing, uh, your Instagram page, or maybe you're uh, in the construction world and um, you are, are there on house, or you might be in the travel world and um, you can look at uh, uh, TripAdvisor. So it really depends on, on your target audience as to um, which area you think is the most appropriate to, to, dis, um, to communicate with your target audience. So once you've um, generated the traffic to your website, let your website convert that traffic into some form of action. Um, it's really important that you use your website as a as a tool for your business. Um, so you think about it, you know, the, if it's a, a proper sales funnel, people will become aware of your business. They'll start interacting with it. Um, they'll become interested in your product or service. And then hopefully they'll take the course of action that you want them to do. There are some great free tools that we can use um, for researching our target audience online. Google Ads will help you identify what keywords your target audience is searching for. Uh, we can also use the LinkedIn platform to check out groups that are, might be interested in your areas of business. With Facebook, um, we can understand how many people are looking or are members of various different groups or particular areas of interest. And then with SEO Optima, we can understand what might be affecting your website search engine ranking positions. Uber Suggest um, is written by a guy called Neil Patel, and um, his software helps you understand, again, your search engine ranking positions, but also what potential keywords that might be out there and what backlinks are coming back into your, to your website. SEMrush does a very similar sort of thing. It's a bit uh, more expensive to use, uh, but it offers a very professional service. Um, again, Microsoft advertising, similarly, you can understand 
what keywords people are using on Microsoft to um, to search for their products and services. And with Google Analytics, we get a bit of a better understanding as to who's coming to your website and what they're doing when they're getting there. So with Google Analytics, um, you can look at how many people are visiting your site, uh, where they're actually coming from, what countries they live in, uh, what pages they're looking at, how long are they looking at it for, and what actions are they carrying out on your, on your site. And you can use this information to help you design your website or understand areas on your site that aren't currently working so well uh, to be able to improve it. Here's an example of um, a tool that I've used Uber Suggest to work out what keywords um, my client who is a gin manufacturer um, ranks for currently. So you can see that in this particular instance, um, the client is ranking number three for boutique gins um, and number nine for rum distilleries near me. And this is really useful information because it can help us understand where the existing uh, keyword traffic is coming from um, and what areas we could help to try and increase that amount of organic traffic going forward. We can also use Google Ads to understand what other keywords that there are out there that are being searched for by our target audience. So you can see that in this particular instance, um, there are 320 searches for premium rum as a, as a keyword, uh, which my client, the gin manufacturer, wasn't currently ranking for. So that represents an opportunity that they could use going forward. So once we understand um, what the most important keyword is, we can then start to look at who else is competing in that marketplace. So uh, again, in using this particular client as an example, uh, we've looked at uh, their, their highest performing keyword, which was premium rum. And then we can see who else is trying to compete for the hearts and minds of that particular um, Google Surfer. So you can you can work out who the main players are in the market, and um, you know these are all companies that are paying money to Google to to appear higher up on search, whether it's through the Google Shopping channel or or through Google Ads. We can then use this information to look at. Um, their websites in a bit more detail. And um, here we've gone in, looked at all the competition that are prepared to pay Google for the privilege of being top of the tree for premium rum. And uh, we can investigate their websites in a bit more detail. And what I was hoping to achieve by this is to show the client, you know, that there are definite opportunities to um, stand out from the crowd, if you like, uh, for for this particular um, keyword. You can see that virtually every single website looks pretty much identical uh, for this particular search term um, and the client's website was in the bottom right hand corner and you can see that there's um, a definite opportunity to enhance the way his website comes across uh, for this audience. And what we could do is use this information to help design the ideal landing page for the client. So when you think about it, you know, you've got your customer out there, they, they've become aware of your uh, link. So they've clicked on your link and they've become, they've gone onto your website. So they, initially, you know, you've got their attention, um, but you turn that attention into interest and then ultimately desire into taking out the course of action that you want them to do when they uh, check out of your website. So, you know, what is it? What does it do? How does it work? If they're interested, you know, how, what will I get? What's the benefit for me? Is it safe? Will it last? You know, does it taste nice? Um, and then if they're interested, um, you know, how much does it cost? How quickly can they receive it? Uh, how do you actually buy it? And why should they buy from you? So you can show your testimonials. And then what are you actually asking them to do? Are you asking them to purchase off the site, make contact with you, sign up to your newsletter? Or what is it that's going to um, be an actual conversion as far as 
people concerned. So when you think about how that, how that all culminates together, you can then use all of the information that we've just been talking about to build a better website for your business. So that was the first half of our section, which talks very much about um, building better websites. The second half um, is generating traffic. So the first thing that I wanted to talk about was search engine optimization. What this graph shows you is how your audience dissipates the further down the search engine ranking positions you um, you become. I'm sure this isn't going to be of no surprise to anybody, but um, what you can see is that if you're ranking number two for a particular search term and you manage to get up to number one for a particular search term, uh, you could potentially double your business overnight by uh, by doing that. Again, if you're going from number three to number two, you could um, increase your business by 50% um, and so on and so forth. So what you can use this information for is to identify the areas of opportunity for you and whether it's worth putting all the time and effort into your um, in improving your search engine ranking positions. So in this particular instance, you can see where the gin company I was talking about earlier ranks for various different keywords. And um, from this, you can work out whether it's going to make um, a big impact to the client, whether they put a lot of effort into search uh, engine optimization. So we can see that, for example, in this particular case, um, you know, if they were to go from number eight to number four for hibiscus gin, for example, that could make quite an impressive difference to their to their business. In this particular instance, what we did is we used a tool called SEO Optima, um, where we put in the client's uh, URL into the um, into the software and what it will show you is uh, certain things that are good about the site and certain things that could improve the site in terms of its search engine ranking positions. SE Optima is great because it gives you sort of various uh, easy to understand uh, guides as to the things that you can do to, to improve your search engine ranking positions. Um, so in this particular case they've given it, uh, the client an A for their SEO apart from the usability of the site, which was graded C, and their social media, which was graded a B minus. And they've listed various recommendations that you could do to um, implement on your site that would improve your search engine ranking positions even more. Uh, we can then look at things like the usability, the performance results, so the speed that your website loads, very important, um, and then how your website is portrayed on social media as well is also is also a key determinant as to where you uh, rank organically. Um, one of the things that um, comes up often is Google's Core Web Vitals, which is a combination of how fast your website loads, how uh, adaptable it is to different um, sizes and formats, um, because people have all sorts of different sizes of mobile phone, tablet, computer, laptop. Um, so if your website's really good at um, adapting to those different sizes and it's visually stable in all those situations, uh, that will give you some good core Google Core Web Vital scores, which will help improve your search engine ranking position. Another very important factor and one of the hardest things to do in SEO is what's called off-page SEO, which is basically backlinks. So um, the more backlinks that you have, um, you know, from reputable sources that uh, are coming from other sites back to yours, um, the better the reputation Google will give you uh, and then rank you more highly for that. So this is a tool from Ubersuggest, uh, which basically shows what the backlinks are for this particular client. And um, you can see that, uh, uh, you know, the more the more backlinks that you get from more highly respected sites, the better off you will be. So if you can't uh, spend the time and effort improving your search engine ranking position, then there's always the opportunity to pay Google for the privilege to be top of the tree. So how do you get the best out of your um, pay-per-click campaign? 
Well, if you think about it, uh, somebody's just Googling a particular item, uh, they, you put in their search query. If you see the ad and it's reflective of that search query and relevant to it, and it sends people to a landing page, which again is relevant to the search query and relevant to the ad, if it's been designed carefully, that will lead in a conversion. So here's an example from my Google Ads dashboard. So you, you're going to send people to a particular landing page. You've effectively got three lots of 30 characters that Google will display um, at, to your target audience. And then you've got two lots of 90 characters to display um, to your target audience. So you really need to think about how to use the power of English to use every single one of those characters uh, to persuade your potential customers to click on your ad and not the ads of your competitors. If you could do that well, you'll get a higher click-through rate and you'll get more of your audience um, landing onto your site, which potentially could lead you to writing more business. So to summarize uh, how you get the best for your pay-per-click advertising campaign, it's really important to set up the campaign correctly. Um, your products, ad groups, ads, landing pages, and your conversion tracking all needs to be done in, in the correct way. Uh, only choose relevant keywords, even if they're in lower volume, because ultimately you only really want to pay for people that are actually gonna buy from you. Uh, use every character that you have available to persuade the searcher to click on your ad and that your landing pages need to be made relevant for what they're searching for. And if you can take the user on a good journey uh, that has a good positive user experience, you will end up uh, getting the best from your pay-per-click advertising campaign. So let's look at uh, Facebook, Instagram and LinkedIn. One of the great advantages of using social media is that by its very nature, the platform will understand w what your target audience likes and dislikes as far as uh, certain things are concerned um, for their preferences. So if you've got a gin manufacturer, for example, uh, it will know that there are people out there that have liked various gin groups or they go to gin bars or they uh, communicate with their friends and talk about having a gin. Um, so the, the platform already knows that information. So you can use that to help you target your, your product or service when you're uh, advertising on social media or you can join various different groups on, on social media that will be um, like-minded and interested in that particular area. So that's one of the great opportunities that social media offers that no other media really enables you to do. Here are some tips to get a better presence on social media. Think about mobile first content uh, and video because most of the social media forms, so TikTok, Facebook, uh, Instagram, um, is, a, is a mobile led content. So think about how your imagery looks in a mobile format rather than design it behind a desktop computer and then send it out to mobile format. So be very mobile led with your social media. You can create your own groups where you are in control of who joins and what they say. Uh, you can install a pixel code onto your um, site which will enable um, your social media platform to build up a picture as to who's visiting your site in order to be able to create lookalike audiences uh, in the future. You can join relevant relevant groups and post in them, uh, which will hopefully start to build up your audience. And if you are going to do social media, do social media, prioritize regularly posting onto those, um, onto those sites, identify who your key influences are, but be true and consistent um, in order to engage with your audience. LinkedIn also has a sales navigator tool that will enable you to uh, communicate directly with your uh, potential uh, customers online. Here's an example of how you might be able to target people on um, Facebook and Instagram ads. So this is for a client that uh, produces vitamins um, and we can target people that like vitamin K and then you can 
decide what objective you want people to do, whether it's building brand awareness or if you want p particular conversions that you want people to do when they've landed onto your site. And also from this, you can identify what potential audience you're going to be talking to. So in this particular case, you know, we've looked at people that might like vitamin K and are also interested in the vitamin club. Uh, that represents 4,400 people to 13,000 people that you could reach daily um, with your uh, Facebook and Instagram advertising campaign. If you can't afford to advertise on um, Facebook and uh, or Instagram, uh, here's an example of how you might join certain groups. Um, so I'm showing you a couple of my examples here where of groups that I'm members of. In Facebook, there's a digital marketing group that's got 293,000 members. Uh, there's 10 posts a day about digital marketing and there's various other ones on there as well. And the, the uh, screenshot from the right is from LinkedIn. So you can, you can particularly uh, target certain groups and interests uh, based upon uh, what your, your objective is for, for your particular client. So um, you can use this to research how popular certain groups are for your, for your audience. And lastly, one of the things I'd like to look at is um, affiliate marketing. So the way that affiliate marketing works is that um, you're, you uh, communicate with your customers through a publisher. So if you're, if you're a merchant, for example, and you've got a product that you want to sell, you would approach the publisher um, who might be an influencer for a particular market um, or um, you know has a has a media that um, communicates to that to that target market, and you would provide them with a link, and that link uh, through the use of cookies would understand whether a customer has been to your site by clicking on that link and made a purchase and then checked out, and then it's a kind of way of uh, enabling other people to do your marketing for you, um, but rewarding them with a commission at the end. So how much money are we talking about here? Um, well, uh, this is according to Shopify. You can see that, um, you know, the, the commissions that you might pay for affiliate marketing links will vary depending on the, the sector. Um, arts and crafts, 12%, um, financial 30 to 40%, um, software as a service, 20 to 30%. So it depends really very much on, on your particular sector, but, um, you can sort of factor this into your, into your marketing uh, strategy, should you wish to do so and be able to provide, um, you know, influences to your market with affiliate links uh, to, to start selling your, your products and services. So to summarize how, how to uh, generate a better return on investment from digital marketing, go from inside out to outside in thinking. That's uh, really important. Um, understand your digital, your, your customers' digital habits by researching what they do online. And then you can use that to make your website landing pages more relevant and more interesting to your target audience. And if you do that and you design it well, then hopefully you'll get more conversions when people land on your website. So how do you generate more traffic to your site? Can you implement a uh, SEO strategy that's effective? Um, don't try and do all things to all keywords. Just make sure that the ones that you are focused on targeting are the right ones for your, your target audience to land onto your site and, and, and buy from you. Look at both your on-page SEO and your off-page SEO strategy to see how you can improve your search engine ranking positions. If you can't afford or you haven't got the time or you want to look at other ways of generating traffic, um, you could implement a pay-per-click advertising campaign. And I've shown you how to do that effectively um, by being relevant to your keywords, to your target audience, to your ads, to your landing page, to um, creating a conversion online. 
And then um, could you use a, an effective social media strategy? So um, does your target audience use social media and how can you implement a decent strategy online uh, through your social media to generate uh, conversions to your website from that? And can you implement an affiliate marketing campaign? So the, these are all things that we should consider when trying to generate a return on investment from digital marketing. Lovely, my goodness. So much content there, Angus. Thank you so much for that. So I think we're, we've, we've got a bit of time now for some questions. Um, I did put a, a quick note in the, the chat if anyone wanted to put questions in the chat, um, but also because of the format we're using today, if you want to put your hand up and ask live a question of Angus, please do. Um, so yeah, so put your thinking caps on. Um, any live questions, if you want to put your hand up and ask a question of Angus, now is your opportunity. If you don't want to come on screen, do just pop it in the chat and I'll ask the question on your behalf. So people have got their thinking caps on, Angus. <laughs> what, what, what's the thinking? Um, a, a, a question from me. Um, I've always found it quite difficult to, to work on what the keywords are I'm supposed to be using because... Um, for some of the work I've done, uh, the, the keyword I've I've sort of thought I needed was so expensive because the competitors out there were much bigger organisations than me and could easily outbid me. Um, so for, as as a as a proper sort of micro in the SME world, um, for me it was more about how do I find keywords that I can actually afford. Yeah, it's a really good question, and I, I think that. Um... If you look at the example that I highlighted in that um, presentation of the gin distiller, um, there were there were various different keywords that they were already ranking for, but they weren't necessarily the sort of um, the the big money keywords, and and obviously that's where all the the big uh, rum producers were prepared to to pay money. So. Um, the way to find out the volume is through Google Ads. Um, you need to be spending money on Google Ads to be able to see the actual detailed numbers. If you're not spending money on Google Ads, you can see that they give you a range sort of 0 to 10, 10 to 100, 100 to 1,000, which is a bit vague, really. Um, so it depends a little bit on on whether you're spending or not if you're not spending you can approach somebody uh, that is spending and and see if they can do the research for you um but it's it's crucial it really is crucial to understand what keywords your target audience are using when they're trying to um trying to buy your products and uh, again with that gin distiller um we could instantly see so they they make a a raspberry and hibiscus gin and what i noticed was that they um they no one was searching really for raspberry and hibiscus gin but there were lots of people searching for hibiscus gin so that was a little nugget of opportunity there and um it was uh, um it was able to show the client oh well there's this pocket of people here that you could target you've got exactly the right product albeit with a bit of raspberry in it and uh, that that could be their point of difference and um uh, so it, it could work really well i also had another um client i worked with recently and they they um they do drone surveys for wind farms and i was chatting to them and going well what is it about your drone surveys that your wind farm owners are looking for and they said the the issue that they have is that with their big wind turbine blades they're worried about something called leading edge erosion which i'd never heard of before so i went onto my google ads panel and i googled how many people were searching for leading edge erosion and there were thousands of people searching for that particular term and i thought well, this is a great opportunity because there's no one advertising out there for the term leading edge erosion, but everyone who was searching for it owned a wind farm and they were struggling with that issue. And so what we did is we placed ads in front of the client that was talking about leading edge erosion. Uh, when it got to the, the landing page on the website, it was talking about leading edge erosion and how you can identify the problems associated it, with it through a drone survey. So that's going back to inside out to outside in thinking which is uh, the kind of core message that i wanted to get across in that uh, that and first you, part 
segued me beautifully into one of the questions that's come into the chat um, from Jack, who's asked, could you expand a bit more on the inside out approach versus outside in? Um, it sounded interesting, but not sure I fully grasped it. So a little bit more. So I think that, that, that sounded like a good example. So it's thinking about what your customer is very much so, so about, as opposed to what you're trying to sell. Yeah. So I, I've worked with so many clients over, over the years and, you know, it, it, it's lovely to see because you've got a business and you go, right, I, I'm passionate about this and that's got to go into the website. And that was really hard for me to do all of those tricky things that I managed to do to get my business up to where it is at the moment. But your customers don't really care too much. <laughs> you know, they they just all they want is they want a solution to their problem that they've come along in. So what you what you're trying to do is you're trying to take your customer by the hand and say, you've got this issue that I want to um, help you to solve. And I understand your issue. And this is my suggestion as to how to solve it. And that's what I mean by um, inside out to outside in thinking. Yeah. So even in your hibiscus gin example, your customer's wanting hibiscus gin. So if you've got your keywords sorted for that, the fact you've got some raspberry and it doesn't really matter. They might just buy from you exactly but, so but so you're saying about, here's yeah, here's your hibiscus your gin wants. but but you know the added advantage has got a um, bit of raspberry in it as well which adds to the taste perfect and dependent on what your company is trying to sell depends on how easy or complicated that is yeah very much so perfect um another another i'm, I'm, I'm gonna I've, I've, got, I've got quite a few questions appearing in the chat now so um uh so along a similar line should we pay on keyword name of company so that depends a little bit on your particular situation. So if, for example, I'm going to take the gin distiller. Um, so they, they have a, the, the, the name of the company is called the Boutique um, Distillery. And that's their, their business name. But if, if you want to appear, if they're not ranking well currently for, for their own name, Yes, it might be worth it. And, and you might find that paying for your own name doesn't cost very much in a cost per click. Um, and what you can do if you're sneaky is you can sort of list your six competitors and pay for their names. Uh, you're allowed to do that to a degree, but Google um, can take a little bit of a dim view on it. But um, you are able to do that, and um, uh, so you can you can appear when people are searching for your competitors' names as well. So, uh, if if you can do that to them, they can do that to you, and obviously all your ads are going to be higher than the organic listing because Google will show the four uh, ads first before they show the top organic listing. So. Uh, should you pay for the name of your company? It really depends. If if there's no one really advertising out there and you're number one for your, the name of your own company, then probably I wouldn't bother. But if it's a competitive marketplace where your competitors are out there paying for your name, then yes, pay for it. Thank you. Um, so again, very specific to your own company and under a bit of research done. Um, a question from James, how much does B2B versus B2C sales influence SMM SEO and PPC. That's a whole mouthful to try to read out. There we go. Sorry, can you ask me that one again? You're making me read it out again. Thank you. <laughs> How much does B2B versus B2C sales influence SMM, SEO and PPC? Okay, so with um, clients of mine who uh, do B2C versus B2B, the B2B price often is a lot higher because if you get a if you get a big contract with somebody that's wanting to buy lots and lots of um, product from you over the course of a year it's worth far more to the business than somebody that's um, potentially just going in and buying one bottle of gin so if waitrose came to the boutique distillery company uh, you know that that would be a huge order and uh, that would affect how you go about doing it now I've worked with several clients recently, and we're going to be talking about one in the example that we're going to go through later on, which is a B2B customer. So I'm going to um, not uh, sort of 
show that example at this stage, but we're going to go through that in a, in a bit more detail later on. But I guess the answer in a nutshell is it's about the size of the prize. And uh, if, if it's, if it's, you know, bigger because it's a B2B contract, then, then it could well be worth um, investing in. Lovely. Thank you, Angus. Um, Sandra's asking us about whether there'll be further sessions to hone some of this stuff. Um, uh, in, in one sense, part of today, we're going to do a couple of exercises in a minute to, to get you doing some work and Angus will talk you through some more. There aren't any further sessions planned in this series of webinars around this, but we will do more work on a lot of this today. Um, so, yeah, so that's that's sort of where we are on that. Um, we are running out of time for this bit of the uh, sort of question session. Um, I was going to say, is, is, is anyone willing to come and ask their questions on online or are you everyone happy me doing it? Because because mm. Helen, you wanted to ask about recruitment. Helen, are you there? Do you want to ask your recruitment question live? Yeah, we've um, we had a digital marketing manager um, who left in January. We thought sort of originally when we um, advertised, it was all about content. We've got five different websites about a billion different social media channels. So we wanted someone who'd be really enthusiastic about that. She arrived and was so data driven. It was all spreadsheets and so and not what really. I mean, it was it was fascinating because I learned so much from her. But we need to. She left and we need to recruit again now. But what we need is a digital. I think the words a digital marketing unicorn, just someone who can do all of it. And I know in this day and age, am I wasting my time trying to find that? Because I need someone who's probably, I don't know, seventy percent content, but thirty percent geekery and you know digital marketing magic behind the scenes and all of that which Kim did do or in, in sort of with the way things are with recruiting at the moment especially for digital people am I, am I dreaming that I'm going to find the right person because we haven't got a massive budget either um yeah it's, it's it's difficult to try and find the right person um there are all sorts of tools that can start making your life easier um you know you've probably seen all about ai and yeah, yeah we use that uh, yeah we, we do that for blog posts yeah and they can write our recipes really easily so <laughs> it's really worrying isn't it so we'll all yeah. be out of a job shortly but um uh i guess um a lot of things are data driven but my suggestion would be um perhaps to have a strategy where you just focus on the the best returns that you can get so if if you're if you haven't got the time or the budget to do all things or to understand why why are you writing all these blog posts what what's yeah. the reason for that are you trying to do that to climb up the search engine ranking positions for a particular mm -hmm. thing or are you genuinely trying to write stuff that people want to read um and my my gut feeling is is that google um google has tr sort of re-evaluated its algorithm to try and make it as more human as possible so if you're writing really good stuff that's interesting that people are going to read um then yeah that that's that's interesting but if you're going to just churn out a load of keyword related uh, yeah. content yeah yeah what's the point and you know mm -hmm. it, 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 and i hopefully you saw the 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 chart in that last presentation and we looked at that gin distillery but i've worked with so many clients and they're ranking number 33 for their particular keyword and they go oh we've got to get up the tree got to get up the tree and i was going well yeah but you might get up to 25 after after you know work, years of work and that's not going to generate any more volume at all. So, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. I think it's about identifying the the um, the quick wins, the prizes, and trying to use the effort and the time that you have available to, to actually deliver a difference. Yeah, probably sort of just more LinkedIn, someone who can master that and get in front of all the people because we're B2B. So, yeah, no, that's really useful. Thank you. Thank you, Helen, for coming on screen with us. Um, Tim, you also had a question around Instagram. Do you want to come on live and ask that one? Hi, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I was just asking about specifically about Instagram, about um, what the best practice is for obviously get, getting new followers. We're, um, should we be following back uh, like 
being very selective with who we follow back. Obviously, as people who will be more specific um, to our business rather than personal customers. Um, but it's just, just what the best practice is and what you'd advise on that. Um, again, it's about engaging with your audience. Um, you can maybe have a look at uh, hashtags that people are using and, um, and and seeing which ones are the most commonly used uh, for your audience. What, what, what line of work is your business? So it's, it's a high quality uh, wood flooring. Okay. So um, with, with high quality wood flooring, um, your target audience, what would be um, builders and floor layers and that sort of thing? Yeah, so architects and interior designers. Um, yeah, also retail clients as well. Okay, so they they that starting. So you're starting to think about how do your how does your target audience use Instagram and um, uh, have a look at their pages and how they're communicating and um, interact with them. You know, you're 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 going to be trying to um, make them aware of your high quality wood flooring. Um, They've got their own agendas, and um, you know if you if you've got some amazing shots of really beautiful floors that you've laid with nice inlays or whatever it is that you do, um, you know that 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 can probably if if you get an architect that's going oh wow I love that and that they're, they're posting about it then they're going to be reaching their gr group of people and it's a positive thing so. It's a, it's a bit like making friends, really, and um, yeah, just just yeah. naturally making those connections, I suppose. Isn't it? Yeah, I would say so. Cool. All right, thank you. Lovely. Thank you for that. Um, I've I've actually run out of questions in the chat now, so last opportunity at this point in the the session to to ask Angus any questions. Otherwise, we'll we'll move on a little bit early to the the case study that we've got coming up next. So any other other questions, either quickly in the chat or unmute yourself and and come and talk to Angus directly. I have a question, uh, mainly, hello? Hello, yes, go for it. Yes. All right, uh, my question is, I'm doing um, essential oils that we're manufacturing, and now we're trying to um, to be on the digital edge of um, promoting our business. We were doing um, business to business, but now we want to um, meet a wider audience and go global. Um, how can you um, say some word of advice if I have to build a website? Uh, to um, promote um, our organic essential oils. Okay, so um, I where, where I would probably start is I would start doing the keyword research. So you may find, did you say it's organic essential oils that you, you, you produce? Correct, yeah. Yeah, so I would start doing the keyword research about what your target audience are searching for are they searching for organic essential oils or are they searching for organic lavender oil or are they searching for organic ylang ylang or whatever it is <laughs> I, mean, I don't know your market so i'm just sort of uh, making it up as i'm going along but the, the you'd, you'd put into um google and i'm going to do an example of this later so i could potentially use your business as an example uh, and we can go in and I can show you what the appetite is for that in the UK and then compare that to um, other countries that you think might be of interest to you or even globally um, and you can see how the the volume of searches increases for particular types of essential oils and you it may influence how you structure your business so if, for example, you can see that, um, you know, there are 500 people searching for organic essential oils, but there's 15,000 people searching for um, organic lavender oil or, or whatever the term might be, you might want to think, OK, well, let's focus very much on what the audience is out there. And, you know, you can you can produce the best possible organic lavender oil if that's the one that's um that that's that people are looking for um over over other particular variants so it's a fascinating piece of data because you're you you're seeing what customers are actually wanting to buy lovely okay, thank, thank you, you.
Thank you for Charlie for coming on and thank you Angus for that. I think we've got time just for one more question and I've got one in the chat. So uh, this is from Michelle about WhatsApp, which I don't think we've mentioned yet today. So uh, question please, how do I get more traffic on WhatsApp, especially WhatsApp business? I'm on a lot of group chats on car dealerships, so please need more insight on that. Mm. WhatsApp, Angus. Good question. Um, I would probably need to do some more research into WhatsApp uh, marketing and uh, and get back to you on that. Lovely. Thank you for that, Angus. It looks like um, we, we, we've got a follow up moment. Um, so I think that was that was it for our questions for now. Any other questions you have in the chat now? We do have another question session later on. Obviously, that'll be focused around the next bit, but we can feed any more questions into that as well if they come up. So next up, we've got a case study um, where um, Angus is going to talk us through what he did with Leaffield Marine. Um, so over to you again, Angus, for Leaffield Marine. Great. So I wanted to talk about um, one of the examples that I've worked on. Uh, the client was called Leafield Marine. Leafield Marine are a global um, company um, who manufacture air valves, um, basically uh, valves that are uh, use inflatable sources to blow up things like um, dinghies and, and paddle boards and that sort of thing. Um, they do air valve accessories and they make all sorts of different types of valves. But the, the important factor is, is that they are very high quality. They're, they're manufactured here in the UK and um, you know it's a, it's a really good quality product. The existing website um, was fine. Uh, it was a WordPress website. Um, but when we look deeper at some of the issues uh, surrounding the website, we could see that there was uh, definitely room for improvement. The website was currently being seen all over the world. Um, the US uh, accounted for 285 out of the total of 1,627 users, followed by the UK. And then there were various other markets, including China, India, um, and a smaller extent, Italy, France, and Germany, Brazil, Japan, and Spain. So um, we could see that they were getting traction in these different markets. Then when we looked at the keywords that the website was ranking for, we could see that they were ranking for their own name and they were doing quite well on, on other important keywords like inflation valve or inflatable valves, where they're ranking number three, number five, and number four, for example. However, when we did our own research, we could see that there was quite a few other search terms out there that were important. Um, and you could see that there were opportunities there to rank better for um, other search terms that their target audience was using. When we looked at the one of the keywords in more detail, so valves for inflatables, we could see that uh, uh, this was the um, choice that was being presented to the consumer. And you could see that um, the company called Ribstore were advertising both on Google Shopping, uh, on Google Ads, and they were also ranking number one organically for that search term as well. As it happens, Ribstore happens to be one of uh, Leafield Marine's main uh, distributors. So we could see that the business consumer angle was almost being taken care of by um, their distributor. There are also other uh, advertisers on Google Shopping who Leafield supply as well. And what that meant was that there was less of a pressure for Leafield to um, be top of the tree for some of these search terms. So in conclusion, when we looked at all of the different aspects of our work uh, that we did behind the scenes for Leafield, we could see that their analytics showed that they had a static user base. So it showed that there wasn't an audience that was growing or decreasing, really. Um, they weren't tracking conversions, so that meant that they couldn't really tell what activity was working and what activity wasn't. Uh, they were running a Google pay-per-click advertising campaign, but I could see that that too wasn't working and it wasn't really being tracked. So we didn't know whether it was culminating in business for the client at all either. 
Um, when we looked at the user journey, uh, we noticed that they were using a WooCommerce functionality, but they didn't actually want to sell directly from their website. And so th what that meant was that um, the customer was getting caught up in, in a sort of checkout process, whereas all they really wanted to do was to um, send an email or complete a HubSpot form um, that would initiate a conversation between Leafield and the, and the client. The website was aimed at both business to business and business to consumer, which we could see that um, there wasn't such a, a strong necessity for, for that to uh, occur. We could see that there was also strong uh, SEO results for the company. Um, however, that involved paying an agency for the privilege of doing so. And they were doing monthly tasks, which was uh, involving creating boring content written for search bots rather than for people. We could also see that they had a, um, a trade press program uh, where they weren't really influencing the influencers. So um, we could see that there was an opportunity there to build their uh, profile to um, important people who would then influence their, their audience. We also noticed that the way that the customer was using LinkedIn uh, wasn't being at its full potential and that there wasn't a customer retention program incorporated into their digital marketing activity. So what did we do? Well, we built a new website for the client. Um, if you look at this, you can see that it focuses very much on the fact that it's a, a world-class um, manufacturer of inflatable structures. Um, and that if you look at the top right-hand corner, you can see that the website uh, has the ability to be able to be translated into different languages, which was going to help uh, build the audience on a global basis. We could see that um, the, as a result of uh, building the new website that the audience was increasing significantly um, and you could see that uh, slowly, slowly it was building up um, week after week. So it had a very much Monday to Friday um, business to business audience that were looking at their, their site, but it was slowly growing. We also set up conversions so that we knew that any uh, activity that we were doing was resulting in a positive outcome for the client. We could see from our Google Analytics that uh, the bulk of the audience was coming via organic search. Um, some was coming directly, so that's possibly from their existing customer data, uh, but database who knew what their URL was. They were also getting uh, organic traffic on social media and referral from other websites. We uh, put together a very um, targeted pay-per-click advertising campaign, um, which was much smaller than it was before. And the client also instigated an email campaign to uh, target their existing customers. So as a culmination of all of that activity, you could see that their audience was, was growing around about 10% uh, per month um, compared to what it was before. Then when we looked at individual countries, uh, we could see that um, the US uh, had grown in terms of uh, its audience. And we could see very clearly that um, our key markets of Italy, um, France and Spain had also significantly increased by about 50 percent across the board. Uh, our Australian market as well uh, was an important aspect to us and we could see that that, um, that increased too. So we were very pleased with those results. Then when we looked at the, um, the keywords that were ranking for the client, we could see that uh, we were still ranking very well for our important keywords, as well as some new ones that uh, had come through. Uh, we'd used um, Uber, uh, Uber Suggest to actually track this. When we looked into the SEO performance for the new website, we could see that it was um, performing well as well. Um, and um, this is SEO Optima. Um, so we could see that there were still some issues that we could um, improve, uh, like for example, usability. And we could see that there were some uh, priorities that we could do uh, in terms of fixing them, but none of them were of a significant priority um, compared to how they were before. On SEO Optima, we could see that um, we still had some work to do on uh, Google's PageSpeed Insights. So that's uh, 
the core web vitals, um, which is important when considering the different formats that a website would take. So we've still got some more work to do in terms of the functionality that is required to improve the uh, core web vitals. But we were limited to a degree with the um, WordPress template that we were working within. We could also see that um, there wasn't a Facebook pixel uh, incorporated into the site um, and that there wasn't Twitter connected with the site either. So we had to um, incorporate that into the, into the business as well, um, even though the client wasn't a particular Twitter um, follower. In terms of our um, uh, backlinks, we could see that uh, we were still, um, you know, backlinks were very important. Um, and by targeting the influencers, we were hoping to increase the number of backlinks that we were getting from uh, high domain authority websites. This shows the uh, ranking uh, referring uh, domains by domain authority. So we could see that we've still got work to do in terms of getting those backlinks coming back from those high authority sites. So um, more work to be done, but uh, it's work in progress. Here's a list of actually all of the um, backlinks that we've got. And you can see that um, uh, we've got various backlinks that are coming from a variety of different um, uh, sources. And we can see that our anchor text, which is the actual under um, where the, the physical backlink comes from, uh, at the moment they were historical ones and they all said Leafield Marine. But if we've got a particular search term that we wanted to go after, we needed to write new content with that anchor text reflecting the keyword that we were, that we were after. So in summary, what happened? Well, um, we noticed that we created a new impactful website that very much concentrated on the B2B. Um, initially, I think we will be uh, doing a B2C uh, website eventually uh, that we've got conversions nicely set up so we can identify what's been working. Um, we're also uh, building relationships with our um, trade press and so we've understood who the influencers are and we're starting to put together a program of content that would be of interest to them uh, rather than bots, which um, I think will stand uh, the test of time. Our pay-per-click advertising campaign was very much scaled down but focused on a B2B relationship um, so that we can get more rib stores on board uh, to sell their products all over the world. Um, we've scaled down the SEO, but focusing on, on keywords that we think that um, will generate the business new customers going forward. And we've targeted new markets uh, through the website language feature. Um, we, we're also going to be targeting non-marine inflatable markets, so um, other things that um, you know aren't on, on water that need to be um, inflated. Uh, and we can see that our um, our language feature has made dividends in Italy, Spain, France, uh, and also we could see improvements in uh, other English speaking countries as well. Um, so the next bit is uh, an exercise. We've got half an hour in the, uh, the timeline. Um, the idea for this next bit is that we're going to split into groups uh, given how many are on call, it'll probably be five groups of about five to six. Um, so when you go into your group, uh, you've got literally a uh, very brief time, just do a quick introduction. Um, and then there'll be some time for you to do your own research on your own website. And Angus will be giving you instructions as to what you need to, to log into and what you need to do. Um, but you can do that research on your own website and then um, share learnings within your group, uh, sort of your initial findings. Um, so that's the plan for the next sort of half hour. And then we'll come back and, and learn from what we've done over that period of time. So um, I'm going to hand us back to Angus to, to give us some details of the exercise. So welcome back, everybody. And back over to you, Angus. Thanks, Deborah. Um, Marcus, have you got the next slide? Oh, there we go. Perfect. So I've got the two links here um, where you're going to put your URL of your website into both SE Optima and um, you can see what score your website gets and what the issues that are holding you back 
and what can you do on your website to improve your SEO score? Um, and also what keywords are most commonly used on your website? So one of the things that SEO Optima does is it will show the uh, how many times certain groups of words appear together on your site. This could be quite an interesting exercise for you to actually see that in, in when it's sort of pulled out at you. Um, and then I think we'll do that first for everybody's site. And then, and then what we'll also do is we'll use that second link that is the Neil Patel Uber Suggest um, site audit. And this will show you how you can look at things like how does your the speed of your site vary from desktop to mobile um, and what other SEO issues were discovered um, how many organic keywords your website has. So there's some, there's a keyword research section of, of the report that this will generate. And you can see how your website's ranking organically at the moment. There's also a section on it that shows keyword ideas. So have a look for that tab and um, it will suggest, you know, the higher volume keywords that are out there that um, you might, might be interested in, in looking at. And you can also see what keywords are driving most of your volume currently of your organic search. Um, you can see what the domain authority um, is of your website. So remember, I was talking earlier about 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30. And your high domain authority websites are sort of the 90 to 100 um, uh, ranking. So you can see how your website is currently performing on that scale it's almost like your cred badge i guess if you like um and how many backlinks you've got at the moment uh you can use the tool to see that and what's your best backlink um knowing what your best backlink is is great because what you can sometimes do is ask that same person for another backlink and then you got two um so it's uh it's a good way of uh, increasing your backlink and and what anchor text is used most of the time in in your backlinks what i've done is i've i don't know anything about charlie's business so i've put in organic essential oils organic oil organic essential organic lavender oil or organic beauty products and what i was trying to do is i was trying to tease out of google what what other searches are for that so um have i missed anything there charlie is there is there another one that you want me to use um maybe plant power sorry plant power plant power yeah um so i'm just going to go back to your website here if I could whoops so you've got organic pain oil organic face oil and organic growing hair growing oil on your website so shall I try those as well correct yeah um pain hair organic hair growing oil i could do with some of that charlie yes you can just contact <laughs> <it. laughs> hey you got your first customer uh yeah. hair growing right here we go okay so i'm oh, going to get results ads, is it this is in google ads yep okay so what we can see here is there are 590 searches Per month for organic essential oils, um, three ninety for organic oil, organic essential uh, forty, organic lavender oil one seventy, organic beauty products two sixty, and plant power three ninety, and organic face oil three twenty. If I scroll right to the bottom of this list, which I'm going to scroll right down to the bottom. You can see that for organic pain oil and organic hair growing oil, there are zero searches 
or that particular keyword. So my suggestion to you is that you don't call these products organic pain oil or organic hair growing oil. What happens if you click on that? So is there another term that could be used instead of organic pain oil? Is there a, because currently there's no, there, there's, there's a market there for organic face oil, as you can see, but there's no market for organic pain oil. Maybe the term has not yet been introduced. That's why they can't find it. So quite possibly. So yeah. I think, um, what do people suffer? Who, who, so if, if you've got, just give me an example as to who might buy that particular product. You know, what, 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 if you have back pain and back pain. Um, there's a product there for, um, for back pain, which is the organic essential oil. So I um, term it pain oil. Okay. So back pain oil neck pain oil so the function of the oil is um is stated oops misspelled that okay i'm just going to put in so i've just put in back pain treatments there's okay. 2,900 searches for back pain treatments. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate what, so what, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to say that there's nobody searching for back pain oil. I understand, I understand. Mm -hmm. um, but there are lots of people searching for back pain treatments. Treatment. And mm -hmm. what you can potentially do is you can take somebody on a journey who's looking for a back pain treatment to say, right, this is the solution to your query, inside out to outside in thinking. Um, and mm -hmm. it's, it's your, you, you can see what your, your customers are, are, are using. And so going back to your website, I would suggest that you might wanna rethink um, some of your, the names of what you're calling your products um, into, uh, something that your target audience is is looking for. Just brings me to, to draw us to a close. So a, a huge thank you to Angus for all of his uh, input today. Um, and uh, hopefully it means you are in a much better place with your SEO, Google ads and pay-per-click um, and can start putting in place that strategy or developing that strategy further um, to make yourself uh, get better return on investment for your social media, which I think was our, and our digital marketing. So that was our aim at the beginning was uh, to make sure you get that return on investment from your di digital marketing strategies. So thank you, Angus. Um, if you require more support for your innovations, uh, do let us know via the on-screen email. So innovation events at businesswest.co.uk. Um, Somerset Council, along with Business West, can also introduce you to colleagues at the Somerset Innovation Exchange or Innovate UK Edge. Uh, Angus mentioned that he does work with Innovate UK Edge and if you're innovating uh, they can also provide some support um, and that's us for today so our next practical workshop is how you can raise funding and finance um, we're taking expressions of interest for that event because it's a full in-person workshop at, at, in Taunton um, and it's numbers limited so it's expressions of interest um, to look at how funding and finance can help support your business um, you can also book on the 5th of July the Tech Leaders Summit um, this will be an all day paid event taking place at Somerset Cricket Ground. Um, again, please book soon as availability is limited um, and you can find the details on the QR code at the bottom of the screen there. So thank you very much for joining us today um, at the Somerset Innovation Exchange. And we hope to see you in one of those two events in July. Thank you very much, everyone.